Well, good evening. Good evening. Is, the, is the button pressed and everything? Okay, ready to go? Okay, good. Okay. We're live. <laughs> Would you please stand and worship the Lord Jesus Christ with us? Greater is He. At this time, we'll have the offering. Amen. Haiti. This is for Haiti. Haiti yeah, the, the, the evening offering uh, is what we are collecting for Haiti. Mm -hmm. So any anything, we'll, we'll save it up and send it all together when we can get it to them and get it designated. Let's pray. <clears throat> Thank you, Lord, again for bringing us together tonight, to bring <clears throat> us here to listen to more of what we believe, to more of what the Baptists believe, and they have they, they put it in writing so that we can understand it. We pray, Lord, that this offering tonight can be used for the for the mission in Haiti for the school as damages has been done and you can protect them and take care of them as you protect us and take care of us here tonight. Thank you again for your mercy and your grace and it's all in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Amen. Join our spirit with the spirit of God. We are one in the bond of love. We are one in the bond of love. We are one in the bond of love. We have joined our spirit with the spirit of God. We are one in the Let us sing. Let us sing. 
because I love thee. You have given life to me. I was in nothing before you found me, and you have given life to me. I will serve thee. I will serve thee because, because said amen. 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 We're so glad he's given life to us. Amen. amen. Well, good evening all. Yeah, we got amen. words on the screen tonight. Awesome. Now, I, I don't know how long that's going to last because I actually hung that up there with duct tape, so I, hopefully <laughs> it'll... Uh, Last to the end of the service, but we'll see. <laughs> no. we'll, see. we'll we'll see. So it was extra strength. Yes. They've got some good duct tape. No, no. <laughs> well, we're back in the Baptist Faith and Message uh, tonight, and uh, we will finish up uh, this uh, section. I think it's on page eleven on salvation, and we'll be looking at the last section, uh, section D, on glorification. Uh, and so if you want to, does anybody want one of these? We have some on the side, uh, a copy of the Baptist Faith and Message. I see several of you have them. So anybody want one? We can get you. But we'll start off with the word of prayer, and then we will uh, introduce this uh, most uh, blessed subject of our glorification. Uh, our Father, Lord, we thank you for... Uh, life for this uh, day. We thank you for giving us uh, food, uh, for rest, um, uh, Lord, for uh, the gift of song and music, uh, for laughter, uh, and Lord, for giving us the truth of your word. Lord, all truth is your truth, and uh, we thank you that you have revealed to us uh, the so great things about your so great salvation that you have graciously given us. Instruct us and encourage us uh, tonight through your word. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. Amen. Well, by way of a, kind of a quick review here and talking about the salvation, um, uh, salvation encompasses uh, the whole man, uh, as uh, the Baptist Faith and Message says. It doesn't, when God saves us, he doesn't just save part of us. He saves all of us, body, soul, and a spirit. And the whole of salvation is kind of delineated into four main aspects uh, that uh, this, this uh, section on salvation uh, goes through. Of um, Regeneration is where it uh, begins. Uh, regeneration, which is the new birth, which God, uh, he makes us alive even when we were dead in transgressions and sins. 
Uh, and then every newborn believer gets two birthday gifts from God. That is faith and repentance uh, that he gives uh, every born again believer. And then when the uh, when the sinner believes, when the sinner exercises faith, he is justified, justification. And that is the one-time declaration that the believing sinner is righteous. That is when the sinner believes and trusts in Christ, justification is when God declares that sinner to be as righteous as God is righteous or as Christ is righteous. We get the righteousness of God. Then last time we finished up on sanctification, and sanctification is not a one-time process. It's a lifelong process of the Holy Spirit essentially growing us up in our faith, the Holy Spirit setting us apart as holy and actually making us holy and righteous. God has declared us to be righteous in justification and sanctification. Uh, we are to walk worthy of this calling he has called us to. And so he begins to work in us the grace of being able to actually in some way be holy. And then tonight we're going to come to this great one on glorification. Uh, and if I could uh, kind of uh, summarize these again. Regeneration is our birth. Faith is our breath. Justification is our birth certificate saying that we have been born. Sanctification is our growth as we grow up in the faith. And glorification is our graduation. Uh, is anybody interested in, gradu interested in graduating? Uh, we kind of like to move on to the next level. Uh, well, we, th that's what we're waiting for in our glorification. And I see here the, uh, the definition here in the Baptist faith and message uh, says glorification is the culmination of salvation and is the final blessed and abiding state of the redeemed. Um, and so here in this a definition it says that glorification it's a, culmi it's a culmination uh, because again this is the the final aspect of our salvation. It is the climax. Uh, it is the end of the game. It is the very final state of what God has wrought into our life. I mean, he's, he's given us regeneration and repentance and faith and justification and sanctification, but we're still waiting for the final end game. Uh, in fact, I looked up the word uh, culmination and it was defined as the climactic point of something especially after attained after a long time. And so it is this climactic point that we have been waiting for, I mean, uh, from uh, the beginning of our, of our salvation. So it's the culmination of salvation. It says, and it's the final blessed and abiding st estate of the re redeemed. It's a blessed estate. When, uh, when we think that we're going to be glorified, it means that we're going to be truly blessed. Uh, I guess this just means it's going to be good. Uh, it's going to be really, really, I mean, it's, it's just not good. It's just gooder than good uh, because we are going to be a blessed estate. And it's an abiding estate, uh, which means that, that what he's going to bring us into in the culmination of our salvation, that it won't end. It will abide for all eternity, that, that, that what he's going to give us, we're never going to get rid of. It is abiding, and it is just for the redeemed. Uh, it's the, the estate of the redeemed. Uh, it is our final good and eternal estate that the redeemed sinner will enter into. And so, okay, so we're going to think a little bit about, about glorification. Now, when we think about glorification, or when the scripture says that we are going to be glorified, what is the common word in, in that? Glorification, glorify, glory. glory. Um, it's the word glory, like we would give glory to God. It's the Greek word doxa or uh, doxazo. Uh, it's like, you know, we sing the doxology, you know, praise God from whom all blessings flow. We, we're giving praise to, to God. Uh, we give honor to him. We give him a, a certain dignity and an exaltation when we glorify him, when we doxa uh, the, the Lord. 
And so when you think that in our salvation, we are going to have some glorification for us, that God is going to glorify us, glorification is when us as the redeemed, we are going to transition from a state of humility, sin, and misery, which is where we are right now, right? We're we're low, we're humble, we're in a state of sin, we're in a state of misery, but we're going to transition from that low estate and we are going to inherit and graduate into a different estate, a state and a state of glory, a state of honor and dignity, a state of, instead of humiliation, it will be a state of exaltation. And we, as redeemed humanity, will actually be highly esteemed. We will be glorified uh, when we enter into glory and we will share in Christ's glory in our glorification. Um, and you know, Jesus set the pattern for us. I mean, in all of our life, we, we follow after him and we are you know, uh, following the pattern that he set. And when he came, though he was rich, he became poor. He, he humbled himself. He became human and low like, uh, the, uh, like us. And he even humbled himself into obedience uh, to death, even the death on a cross. And after his humiliation, and when he took our sin upon himself and he humbled himself to death and burial, then he was exalted. He was raised in the resurrection. He was, uh, when he, he was ascended into the right hand of the Father and he entered into his exaltation. His glory, the Son of God, was glorified. He went from low in humility to high in glory and exaltation. And as his followers, we will follow that same pattern. That is the pattern of our Christian life. And right now we are in the state of humility. We are taking up our cross. We are following him. We are putting to death sin uh, in our sanctification and mortification and putting it on the cross and burying it. But we will be raised and we will ascend on high to sit with Christ on his throne, even as he sat with the Father on his, on his throne. We will be glorified. We are waiting as Christians for our graduation. We've been born. We have faith and breath. We have our birth certificate. We've been justified. We are growing up in our faith. And we are waiting for graduation the full culmination of our salvation. And so let, let's look at a, at a few verses here. Uh, we'll start off in Romans chapter 8 in verse number 30. And again, this is uh, open up for, the, for, uh, for discussion. Romans chapter 8 and verse number 30. And here, uh, this verse lists, uh, it lists four parts, if you will, of our salvation. It's a different four than the four that are lifted, listed in our Baptist faith and message. Our Baptist faith and message speaks about regeneration, justification, sanctification, and glorification. Uh, here, this verse mentions two others that aren't mentioned, uh, at least at this part in, our, uh, in the Baptist faith and message. It's mentioned later, but look at verse number 30. And these whom he predestined, he also called... And these whom he called, he also justified. And these whom he justified, he also glorified. Now, I, I'm not very good on uh, maybe sentence structure and what tense this is. It, it kind of sounds like past tense to me in all this. This is something that, something that God also did. He, what he did here, he also did here, he also did here. And it's like it is a... It is a done deal. And here in this verse, it lists four parts of our salvation in the way that, that, that God, has, uh, God has saved us. He's predestined us. He's called us. He's justified us. And he has, almost like past tense, he has glorified us. 
And all four of these are spoken of as they are a done deal. They are all for one and they are one for all and they are all connected. That is, if we get one of them, we will get all of them. Because remember, like the, we, we say in here, that salvation involves the redemption of the whole man. It is a complete salvation for the complete person. And when he, as this one says, when he predestines us, he calls us, then he will justify us and he will glorify us. Or if he has regenerated you and he has justified you, then he will sanctify you and he will glorify you. I mean, this is such a great thing that if, if we get one part of salvation, then we're going to get the whole realm of salvation. Um, we read, in fact, someone read Philippians 1.6. Philippians 1.6. And this is something great about... Um, a great about our salvation. Philippians 1 6. Being confident of this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. So if he began a good work, I mean, who, who's the one that begins salvation in us? I mean, it's, it's God. If he begins that work in regeneration you know he's making us uh, born again and he's justified us if he's began that work then guess what he is going to complete it he's going to sanctify us and as Romans 8 30 says uh, that whom he justifies he will glorify um, and in fact I, I find it's kind of interesting here because uh, one of our four in the Baptist faith and message is left out of, of this one after justified, he goes right to glorified. We, we have in there after justification is sanctification. Paul leaves out sanctification. Uh, and I'm kind of glad about that because I don't know about you, but sanctification is the one area I really struggle with. You know? I mean, that's the area that gives me the most doubt in my salvation is my sanctification. Well, here in this verse, he completely skips it. He says, if you're justified, then you're going to be glorified. Uh, he is going to bring us to the final culmination of our salvation. Uh, and the, it ends up in this great thing called glorification. Uh, another, another verse, 1 Corinthians 15. Uh, and here we get into a little taste of maybe what our glorification looks like in a way. Uh, this is just a tremendous uh, passage. The First Corinthians 15 uh, talks about just the essence of the gospel and spends most of the time uh, def defining uh, and talking about the resurrection uh, because one of the things we do believe in, we believe in the resurrection of the body. We believe in glorification, that the redeemed sinner will be glorified, will be resurrected, we're going to be made new. And in these verses, 1 Corinthians 15, beginning in verse 42, we start seeing what this is going to look like. So also in the resurrection of the dead, it is sown a perishable body, but it is raised an imperishable body. It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. It is sown a natural body. It is raised a spiritual body. If there is a natural body, then there is a spiritual body. So here we have four descriptions of, the glor of our glorification, especially as it relates to our physical body. When we uh, die, um, we are buried in the ground a perishable body. We, our, our bodies, our, our whole selves, we are given to decay. Um, anybody, you feel that in your body? Uh, feel a little bit of decay going on uh, in the body? Well, guess what? In glorification, uh, we're not going to be perishable. We are going to be imperishable. Imperishable is something a part of our glorified state. I mean, it, you know, to put this in realm of food, do any of you feel like a perishable food item? <laughs> you know, I mean, we, we, are, we, we are perishable food items, if you will. But in glorification, when God glorifies us, though we are sown perishable and decaying, we will be raised imperishable. 
our perishable and decaying state of existence will end in our glorification. In fact, the next verse says in verse 43, it is sown in dishonor, it is raised in glory. I mean, there, there is something dishonorable about us human beings because we have sinned against our God. We are shameful. We bear shame and guilt and, and dishonor, dishonor on us. But in glorification, uh, we will be honored. We will, in fact, be glorious. There'll be, there'll be something glorious about us. He will make us new. Now, I don't feel very glorious right now because I'm not glorified. I have been regenerated and I have been justified and I'm being sanctified, but I am waiting for my glorification for the time that I will be glorious. Uh, you know, we're marvelous, you know. I mean, you know, that hadn't happened yet, uh, but yet we are, we're eagerly waiting to be glorious. Now the rest of that verse in verse 43, it is sown in weakness, it is raised in power. Uh, who's ready to trade a little weakness for some power? Uh, that's glorification. Our glorified state, we are going to be rid of all of our weaknesses that we have. Weakness is a part of, of humanity, whether it's to err is, is human or, you know, that we are frail, we are weak, we are undone, we run out of energy, all the things that could be encompassed within weakness. But in a glorified state, we will be in a state of power. Uh, we are sown in weakness, we die in weakness, but we are raised in power. There will be something powerful about us in our state of glorification. Uh, the, in verse 40, 44, we see uh, the fourth thing mentioned. Uh, we're sown a natural body. It's raised a spiritual body. If there is a natural body, there's a spiritual body. So in, in, our, in our glorification, we're going to be imperishable. We're going to be glorious. We're going to be powerful. And we're going to be spiritual. Now, we're, we're going to be going to be human because part of our physicality is part of our humanity, but even our body is going to, is referred to here as a spiritual body. Now I have to say, I have no idea what this means because I don't know what a, I've never seen a spiritual body. I don't know really what it entails, but it's got to be pretty good because God is spirit. And you know, we're made, we're going to be remade in his image in our glorification and we are going to have a spiritual existence even our bodies will be spiritual in a way. Um, you, you remember that Jesus' resurrection body, when he was raised from the dead in his glorified body, uh, his body did not have the same limitations that a normal physical body would have. They locked the door and were in scared, and he could go through a wall, and he could go through a door, and he could just disappear. And, and his body, his glorified body, was a spiritual body that had abilities that were far beyond our just mere physical existence. And so in glorification, when our salvation reaches its culmination, we are going to be imperishable, we're going to be glorious, we're going to be powerful, and we're going to be spiritual. Uh, it, it's going to be, um, um, it's going to be glorious. Uh, it's going to be uh, an exaltation uh, that, will be, uh, that, that will be great, uh, great to be sure. Uh, let's see, another one here. Um, oh, just, just go down to verse 50, the same chapter, these, uh, 1 Corinthians 15, verses 50 to 54. Uh, I'll just read this. It kind of reiterates the same thing. Now I say to this, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. We're not going to make it into heaven the way we are now. We, 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 we've got to be glorified because uh, we are in a state of humility. We can't go the way we are now. Nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we will all be changed. In a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound, the dead will be raised imperishable, and we will be changed. For this perishable must put on imperishable, and this mortal put on immortality. But when this perishable will have put on the imperishable and this mortal would have put on the immortality, then, we will, then will come about the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. And so our glorification, again, it's imperishable. We are going to be immortals. 
uh, we are going to be immortal, and it's just put in here in a couple words, we're going to be changed. Uh, you know, the, the, the rapture at the end when Christ comes and the, and, the, and the trumpet sounds, we're going to go through an immediate death and resurrection, and we are going to be in glorification. We're going to be made new. We're going to be changed, whatever that is. That's what we're going to be, imperishable, powerful, glorious, um, uh, and, and spiritual, and just a, a magnificent culmination of the salvation that, that he's given us. Um, another one here, 2 Corinthians 3 and verse, verse 18. Oh, yeah, we've got plenty of time. Hey, we, we're on a pace to get out early tonight. So, um, uh-oh, I, I, I shouldn't say that. That's a, do, I jinx, do I jinx y'all when I do that? So I'm gonna, um, 2 Corinthians 3, 18. Um, and here, the, in this passage, uh, it's, it's alluding to the account. You remember when Moses was on the mountain? Uh, and he was in the presence of God, and then he, his face was shining. I mean, and so he had to put a, put a veil over his face. His countenance was changed. His whole appearance was changed because he was in, in, in the presence of God. And then in verse 18, it says, But we all with an unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as from the Lord of the Spirit. You see, he, he's saying that, that our Christian life is reminiscent of what happened to Moses on the mountain. Moses was in the presence of God, and then he began to reflect and to shine forth the glory of God. Now, it wasn't in full effulgence, but it, it sure set him apart from everybody else, and he kind of had to put a, a veil on that. But he says, now we as believers, we have unveiled faces. We've been born again. We have been justified. We are now, in a sense, in the presence of God. The Holy Spirit is in us. And we begin to reflect that glory in our sanctification. It, it, that, that glory begins to kind of eke out in us just a little bit as we are being transformed and made new creatures in Christ. It's in a mirror. That we begin to reflect the very glory of the Lord. And we're being transformed into the image of Jesus Christ. Our sanctification begins to start making us to look like Christ. It's the start of the process. You, you, you remember the transfiguration when Christ was transfigured? And his appearance was changed. They were with him on the holy mountain, and all of a sudden he looked a lot different, and he became bright and shiny, brighter than the sun, and his appearance was transfigured. And he began to look like the divine person that he is. The veil was ripped off. Well, in, in some way, we're in that process right now in our sanctification. We're beginning to reflect God's image just a little bit, just a kind of a, a dim, dim reflection. But our sanctification is a down payment, a guarantee toward our glorification. It's just a small piece of the full culmination of our salvation where we will be glorified and I will actually reflect the glory of God the way I was made to. You know, none of us do that. We, we, we're, we're made in the image of God and, and we don't do that very well because we're sinners. But in glorification, I will in fact reflect the glory of God the way humanity was made to do so. Glorification is humanity at its highest. It is when humanity, redeemed humanity, looks like the man, Jesus Christ. That's our glorification. Now, I'm, right now I'm being transformed from glory to glory. I've, I've been in God's presence. I reflect a little bit. But when I get to glorification, it's going to be the full effulgence of the best I can reflect God is going to be what, what glorification is. I, I will be an unbroken mirror and to be able to reflect God's glory. His glory will be reflected in my person, body, soul, and spirit. Uh, and we will be 
perfect humanity because we will be like the man of humanity other than the Lord Jesus. Anyway, that's just a great, a great little verse. I think it kind of mentions both our sanctification, the process of going from glory to glory, but we're waiting for us to be fully glorious. Um, in glorification. Uh, another one, Philippians 3. And this is a, another beautiful text. Philippians 3, verses 20 and 21. Uh, and y'all can jump in here if you want. I get tired of hearing myself speak, and you might not believe that. But, um, okay, Philippians 3, 20 and 21. For our citizenship is in heaven, from which we eagerly wait for a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, and notice, who will transform the body of our humble state into conformity with the body of his glory by the exertion of the power that he has even to subject all things to himself. I mean, what are two verses here? I mean, we, you know, we're, we're not just uh, citizens of the United States. It's a great thing to be an American citizen. But as believers, our chief citizenship is where? Heaven. In heaven. Our, citi our citizenship is heaven. That is where we have been saved to reside. And we are going to be prepared to be able to live in this new existence. And to be prepared for that, it says that he is going to transform the body of our humble estate. We have to go through a change. He is going to transform us. We need to be transformed. Figured. We need to have a, a different kind of existence and body than we do right now to prepare us for the glory that is to come. And this transformation of our body is going to be in conformity with his glorious body. So he's going to make us look like him. He is going to glorify us from our humble state and transform us into what his state is to where we are going to be conformed unto his likeness. And as he is glorious, so too we are going to be glorious because we're going to reflect that image. He is going to change us, as it says, Transform our body, uh, the body of our humble estate, into conformity with the body of his glory. We are going to have a glorious existence, a glorification, a glorious body. In fact, not just glorious, but he mentions uh, power. It's done by the exertion of his power that he has even to subject all things to himself. Again, you know, they're, they're, they're kind of reminiscent, and he's saying the same things, uh, you know, over again. We're being transformed. We're being conformed to look like Jesus. We're going to be glorious. We're going to be powerful. This is our glorification. We are, um, we're going to be shiny. <laughs> you know, I, 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 I don't know. We're going to be, I, I don't know. We're going to be glorious. Uh, this is in, in, in our glorification. Uh, just a couple of more here. First John 3 and verse 2. Uh, 1 John 3 and verse number 2. Uh, and it says, Beloved, now we are children of God. We've, we, you know, we, we've been born again. We've been regenerated. We've had uh, faith. We're justified. We're being sanctified. We're children of God. And it has not appeared as yet what we will be. But we know that when he appears... We will be like him because we will see him just as he is. Now, when we come to the subject of glorification, we have to say we don't know exactly what it's going to be like. We, just, we, we, we do not have, uh, God has not revealed uh, the, 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 the full ball of wax uh, to us. We, it says we, it has not appeared as yet what we, uh, what we will be. Uh, we read in 1 Corinthians 2, 9, that eye hath not seen and ear hath not heard and neither has it entered into the heart of man what God has prepared for those who love him. We don't know the full extent of what heaven's like and what our glorification is like. We, we don't know the full extent of it, we got, but we do have a little bit of glimpse of it. We don't know some things, but there's one thing that we do know. We do know we're going to see him as he is. You know, and it says, now, wait, 
we can't see God or we will die. Our, our, our estate right now, our bodies, our eyes, we can't bring in that glory. It would kill us. But we're going to see him as he is and we're going to have that ability to see him as he is because we're going to be made like him. You see, our glorification will give us the capacity to bask in his glory. Right now, we can't do it. You know, I mean, even Moses on the mountain, God had to cover him up. You cannot see my, my glory. You cannot see my, my, my face and live. But in glorification, God will give us the ability and the capacity with our total culmination of our salvation to where we will be able to see him as he is and we will bask in his glory and we will shine more than Moses shone on the mountain. You know, I mean, we, we, we are going to be glorified uh, in, a, in, a magnificent, uh, in a magnificent kind of way. Um, any feedback on this? This is pretty good stuff. I hope so. Um, oh, man. Just, forward to it. Yeah, uh, just, just, just a couple more here, and then we'll close. Matthew 22 and verse 30. Um, this here where Jesus was uh, being questioned about the resurrection and they had bring this question of marriage uh, uh, in as far as marriage in the new estate. Uh, but he's, he says something kind of interesting in Matthew 22 and verse 30. Well, somebody read that if you got it. At the resurrection, people will neither marry nor be given in marriage. They will be like the angels in heaven. Okay, so to kind of skip off that we're not going to marry or be given in marriage, but Jesus adds something about our glorified state that we're going to be like the angels. So when God has redeemed us sinners and when we get the full culmination of our salvation, in some sense we are going to be like unto the angels. Now we are not going to be made into angels. You know, sometimes you'll hear that someone dies and they, they got their wings or... Uh, what Clarence in that movie, you know, he, the bell rang and he, he got his wings. You know, we don't turn into angels. You know, that, 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 that I mean, that, that's not what happens. But we are made like unto the angels. Because remember, at glorification, we are being exalted to a higher estate and to a higher plane. And so we are lifted up and esteemed and exalted to be made like the angels. Remember, God made us a little lower than the angels, but in our glorification, we're going to be made like unto the angels. We are going to be glorified. And one of the things that the angels are described, um, that they are shining. They're shining ones, you know, that they, that, that they shone. They're, that, that there's the brightness to them. There is a glory to the angels. And and that estate that they enjoy in the way that God created them, that's what he is going to elevate us to in our glorification. We are going to be likened to the angels. In fact, there's a song in a little kid's show. My kids will know this. I'm so shiny. You know, uh, y'all know that movie from, uh, what's that from, Zoe? Moana. I'm so, you know, that we're going to be shiny. We're going to be like the shiny ones, you know. Uh, that's our glorification, where he's going to glorify us, body, soul, and spirit. We're going to be exalted, uh, or to use uh, as, a, as a comedian of old used to say, you know, I'm marvelous. You know, we're, we're, we're going to be marvelous. I mean, there's going to be, I mean, it is just, just uh, beyond our capacity to think, uh, to think what, you know, what we're going to be like in glorification. One more and we'll close here, unless we want to talk about uh, Yes. But the Shania glory is that the same glory, or is it a different kind of glory? Yeah, that uh, that that Shekinah glory that God, I mean, what are, the glory of God that He, the effulgence of the glory that emanates from Him because He is light. Us being saved, redeemed, and glorified, we're going to be able to be the perfect reflection of that the perfect image of that. And so whatever that is, that Shekinah, we will be able to reflect it in, you know, in, in some way. Uh, and I think there will be a, I mean, it'll be something that we can see as in who we are, but also in how we act. Because the image of God is not just, not just our physicality. I mean, uh, you know, that we're going to be renewed in that image, but it's in our character. 
you know, we don't reflect God very well in the way we behave. Well, when we are glorified, I am going to perfectly reflect God's character in the way I behave for eternity. You know, I, I'm going to, um, you know, I will be godly, you know, truly godly for the first time. I will be Christ-like for the first time. Us redeemed sinners, we will be like Jesus. In fact, the last one I'll have is read in John 1.14. It speaks of not necessarily glorification, but of Christ's glory. And I just want to tie this in as, as we close here. John 1.14, it says, The Word became flesh and dwelt among us. God humbled Himself. He became flesh. He, he, he lived down here among us. And it says, And we saw His glory. There was something glorious about the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, he was glorious on the Mount of Transfiguration, but only three people saw that glory, right? I mean, there, he was shiny, to be sure. But there was something about the life of the Lord Jesus that shines from all of human history. He sh he's the one that shines. He's the only glorious person that's ever lived, right? Uh, we saw his glory, the glory as the only begotten of the Father. I mean, this guy was the Son of God. And you could tell it by the way he lived and talked and behaved and everything about him shone forth in glory. He says he was uh, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Jesus' glory was that he was full of grace and he was full of truth. And our glorification is when we as redeemed sinners, when the full culmination of our salvation comes to bear upon us, we will be like Jesus and conform to his image. We will be full of grace and truth. Um, you know, Romans 8.29 8, says that he has predestined us to be conformed to the image of his son. That's the end game of our salvation. He's made us sons of God to look like the Son of God. We will look like Him. We will reflect Him in our outward appearance as well as our character for all eternity. Something we have never done here. You know, I mean, we're going to enter into glory and actually be full of grace and truth. Our image will be restored. You know, when we sin against God, we... We didn't lose the image of God, but the image of God was marred and we no longer reflected Him as we should. But the culmination of our salvation is when there is a restoration of the whole human person, body, soul, and spirit. And when we reflect Jesus Christ, when we are the perfect humanity, when the redeemed sinner, when we will reflect the image of God in the way that he has foreordained it and in a capacity, a full capacity that as humans only we can do because that's the way he's made us. And our glorification is when we enter into that. You could say our glorification is when we become perfectly human. You know, the, the way we were made to be, even better than the garden we will be glorified. And that's just something we have, we have to, to sort of look forward to in the full culmination of our salvation. Well, any, anything y'all want to add to that or talk about that or we want to leave early? <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We want to leave early. Well, I went 10 minutes long this, this morning, so hey, we'll get out 10 minutes early tonight and make up for it. Well, it's a... Do what? Well, like I said, it's a, a great thing to think about, to think about our so great a salvation. It's going to continue, um, continue next time in the, the next uh, section on God's purpose and grace. And so that's kind of, at least the plan right now will be that we will just pick it up uh, in the next section on God's uh, purpose, uh, God's purpose and grace. And we'll close with a with a word of prayer. Our Father, Lord, we thank you for uh, telling us who we are, for who you are, and for telling us what is to come. Uh, Lord, give us the eager anticipation uh, of your son's soon return and our uh, being united uh, to him, to see him as he is, to be made like unto him. And Lord, we long for that eternal embrace 
uh, and to be uh, made the way that you have ordained us uh, to be. Encourage us uh, tonight. Uh, equip us for the uh, duties of tomorrow and grant us sweet rest and sleep this evening. In your son's name I pray. Amen. Amen.